my name is Michael Timpson. Welcome to my world of music. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up near San Francisco, where I had so many cultures around me all the time, such a great influx, but particularly cultures from Asia. I also used to be a jazz saxophonist, particularly baritone saxophone, and I also played bass clarinet. Bass clarinet, I used to actually hook up to guitar pedals, so it wasn't quite such a kosher way, but led to my interest in electronic music. So that's actually the background that formed me as a composer. And of course, I went to school and I decided I want to write classical music because I can do anything. I can use any musical resource I want. So, that background for me led to some interesting elements in my music. Come with me, let me show you. So, I like to say that my music has three spheres of influence. I am a classical composer. I've influenced by the things that we do and the techniques we do with classical music. So, I have the European influence, obviously. Something I studied very hard to learn about. Of course, I'm an American. And uh, it's hard not to have that influence who I am as a composer. Certainly, we have a free spirit here in the United States. We have an openness to ideas. And we also have, you know, some very important genres of music in our background. Then Eastern music, that is, from Asia. And as I said, it had a huge impact on me as a kid, hearing many different cultures around, but especially the music from Asia. Now I have to say, the music from Asia was not something I used right away as a composer. It took many years until it became part of me and started finding its way into my music. So, in my music, I said I had three elements. Let's first discuss the European element. And in the European element of my music, I've been influenced by some major, major, major ideas. One is the concept of development. That is, taking the smallest idea and using that to generate all the ideas that come about in your music. Very important to me. Very important to have music connected. Experimentalism. Of course, European music in the 20th century, the 21st century, was always searching for a new sound, a new voice, and individuality. And that's certainly a part and parcel of my music. And uh, a final version, I talk about that my music sometimes has a very economic quality to it. Now, I don't mean that it's commercial music, like it's good for the economy. No, that's not what I mean at all. What I mean by economic is there's a simplistic root in it. There's often very simple ideas that hold it together. Although, actually, if you're going to do this well, the development side well, you kind of need that in the first place. Now, in terms of pitch, I had multicultural influences, I had jazz influences, I had experimental avant-garde European influences. In terms of pitch, I run the gamut. I especially like to express myself through aggregates and through atonality and through intervolic emphasis. But also in my music, there can be a harmonic development. And what I mean by harmonic development, I mean in a contemporary harmonic development. It's not about finding new keys or going through a key scheme that Shanker would love. No, instead my music is about using all the resources we have and making things that didn't necessarily traditionally go together in the past find their way in their music. So, for example, I can have music that's very diatonic move to music that's very atonal, or music that's atonal move to something that's very diatonic. And how do I do this? Through development. Through connecting ideas. I also sometimes use serialism or dodecaphonic music. Not most of the time, but every once in a while it fits in what I'm doing, and I find some creative ways, often I try to hide it in the music, that I will use 12 tone music. Rhythm, of course, is a very important element in my music, being a jazz person anyway. And of course, all the elements that we find in avant-garde European music, such as polyrhythm, metric variability, are very interesting to me. And what's kind of fun about me is some of my favorite music is some of the most modernist music, such as Elliot Carter, or Babbitt, or Stockhausen. Stuff music might be called maximalist kind of music. At the same time, I'm very attracted to sometimes minimalist music, which goes back to my interest in simplicity. Of course, the other European elements that are in my music, of course, we all learn our counterpoint. Of course, my music has contrapuntal elements in it. 
although I often try to find other influences than just writing a few. Sound mass. Of course, this is a very important part of the latter 20th century. And being very interested in texture and timbre, sound mass is an important element. And that ties along with an influence of electronic music. I've written electronic music in my life. I used to play electronic music. And of course, that all ties into my view of timbre and texture. Well, what's American about me? Well, of course, the most important influence I get from being an American is I have a stylistic influence from jazz, but also other music that is uniquely American, including funk, hip-hop. Actually, I find there's some very great experimentalism going in hip-hop. So occasionally hip-hop will enter my music. Other related pop genres sometimes, like techno, etc., have influence on my rhythmic and harmonic choices. In terms of harmonic choice and the way that my pitch is influenced, it's still using contemporary music techniques. So I'll write atonal chords that sometimes sound like jazz chords, but you would never find them in jazz. Let me play you one simple example. That would be a great example. Or I could switch that around and play chromatic cluster spread out to sevenths and ninths. just one example of the type of chords that I'm interested in. Just the colors. And also, my melodic ideas often have these wonderful streaming passages that are supposed to sound a little bit like bebop. In my rhythm, firstly, I'm very attracted to having some sort of groove, some sort of pocket, some almost dance-like fill. But that doesn't mean I leave the complexity of contemporary music behind. They're all put together. Of course, ostinatos sometimes appear in my music, and I like an improvised feeling in my rhythm. So often we see transcriptions of jazz are all eighth notes, but in reality, my music shows what really happens in jazz, that things aren't always exactly on the beat, that things sometimes slide forward and backwards, and I like to show that feeling. The other thing about American music that has influenced me is that we have kind of a cavalier attitude. It's like, we sometimes like, well, why should you follow the rules? Sometimes we're going to break the boundaries. Sometimes we're going to do the things that you're not supposed to do, but if you can do them well and you can do them in a sophisticated way, you can get away with them. And related to that is an appreciation that sometimes the banal, the most base things, can actually be very useful resources. Just the same way that Stravinsky used primitivism. The Asian influence, as I mentioned, came later in my life in terms of expressing it musically. But how Asian and Eastern music is very influential on me is the atmosphere in which it creates. One thing I didn't like about a lot of American composers, they say, oh, I'm going to be Asian, so I'm going to use this. Well, that's not Asian. That could be Mexican. That could be Indian. That could be many different cultures. To me, it's the atmosphere of the music that's more important to me. So, what atmospheric relationships in Eastern music appeal to me? Heterophony. The combining of several different versions of the melody together at once. And for me, heterophony can often sound like sound mass. It can also create counterpoint. It also can be used developmentally. Also an Eastern music influence, rhythm, of course. One aspect of Eastern music that's really appealing to me is the sort of rhythm that moves with nature. Breath rhythm. The kind that you find where it falls like a leaf, very naturally, almost having a stillness to it. I also use the word kotaken as another rhythmic aspect that's appealing to me. And Kotaken is a rhythmic aspect that's really opposite of breath rhythm. It's from Balinese Gamelon. That's where we have several people put together, almost like clong farben melody, playing a melody and expressing it. Sometimes called stratified texture. Also in Eastern music, again, I don't really like you know, just using the pentatonic scale. In fact, I only sometimes use that, and if I do, it's very masked. What I find is I can use atonal and chromatic harmony to sound like musics that have different timbres and different intonation. 
So I find chromatic harmony is a very useful way to sound non-Western. And then, one deep impression that has more and more influence on me in my music is the concept of gesture and timbral focus. That is, music that's drawn together by just little slight elements. And the other aspect that's appealing to me is the authenticity of folkism, of having, you know, appreciating music in its unrefined state. 